Good morning, presenting from Medicine One. Um, presenting, this is our 43 year old female who presented to us with chief complaints of weakness of bilateral upper and lower limb for three months. She was apparently well three months ago when she developed discoid skin lesions over the bilateral limbs and was treated locally but did not resolve. It started as difficulty to lift up heavy objects, combing hair and taking food to the mouth. Subsequently, she developed difficulty in climbing stairs. It progressed to inability to walk and subsequently being bed bound and inability to take turns on the bed. Uh, the other relevant history, there is on and off cough for three months, very non-specific, not associated. There is no history of any difficulty in holding objects, no history of any slippage of footwear. There's no history of any breathing difficulty, no history of any ball bladder involvement, and there's no history of any sensory loss or any seizure, syncope of lo or loss of consciousness. On examination, there's no pallor, rictus, sinusis, clubbing, lymph node enlargement or fetal edema. Skin examination showed discoid plaques present over bilateral upper and lower limb with restricted mouth opening. Vitals BP at 80 per minute, uh, pulses 80 per minute, BP at 110 by 80. Systemic examination, CVS respiratory and uh, CVS S1, S2 was heard, no murmurs. Uh, respiratory system had bilateral basal minimal crepes. Abdomen was soft, non-tender with no organomegaly. CNS examination, cranial nerves were, within, were normal, motor system, power upper limb, bilaterally proximal 1 by 5, distally 4 by 5, lower limb bilateral, proximal again 1 by 5, distally 4 by 5, tone was normal, sensory system was within normal limits, deep tendon reflexes were brisk, plantar reflex, bilaterally delayed flexor, uh, there was no signs of cerebellar dysfunction, gait was not assessed, meningeal signs were absent. So the symptom complex we're dealing with is um, skin lesions followed by motor weakness, proximal more than distal. Okay. Any differentials you can think? Uh, on investigation. It had come, system has logged out of the internet. No, system has logged out. There's no internet connection. Okay. So we're dealing with a um, patient who's come to us with three-month history of um, skin lesions followed by uh, muscle weakness, which is proximal more than distal.
Okay, we'll just go ahead with the investigations. Um, uh, on investigation, uh, HB was at 10, WBC at around 4,000, platelets at 88,000. LFT showed uh, mildly elevated SGOT, PT, and ALP. Creat at 0. 0.6, uh, sodium 137, potassium at 4.2. CPK was at 2,785, ANA was 3 plus spectral. This is the myositis panel, MI2 alpha was 3 plus, MI2 beta was 2 plus, and PL12 was positive. The other connective tissue workup was also done, which was negative. So the diagnosis of, uh, with the skin lesions and these findings, the diagnosis of uh, dermatomyositis was made. Just looking briefly into the management of dermatomyositis, uh, Primary. Yes. yes, she's been actually, there's a history of uh, native medications also that she's been on concurrently for the symptoms. Three months prior, these symptoms have been present. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am, we have done the workup. I'll just come to that. Uh, primarily, management of myositis is uh, pulsing with high dose IV steroids. Uh, there's a bridging, tapering dose of oral steroids that we use, which is followed by a second line agent, either cyclophosphamide, rituximab, or something. Uh, the other things to consider when we are looking at a uh, diagnosis of dermatomyositis is. Uh, Considering malignancy, a CCT abdomen was done, which was negative. Bone marrow was done, which showed uh, trilineage hyperplasia. Tuberculosis workup was done uh, prior to starting the high dose steroids, which showed a sputum expert positive for rifampicin sensitive mycobacterium tuberculosis. MGUT is still pending. Uh, so, just my point of this is there are treatment modifications that are done because the patient had a concurrent TB along with dermatomyositis. So the difference is uh, we cannot give high dose IV steroids. So a better option was IVIG. IVIG also causes immunosuppression, but that was a better option than high dose IV steroid pulsing. Oral steroids, which is generally given at 1 mg per kg, was had to be, I mean, we had to give it at 0.5 mg per kg. Second line immunosuppressive agents could not be given until the intensive phase of the ATT was completed. This is an article that was published this is from China, which shows increased risk of active tuberculosis. He has prostate susceptible pulmonary tuberculosis. And you start from any tuberculosis. So then why are you referring to these mental Oh, the, the, Even IVIG, all of them cause immunosuppression. So it so can just cause a flare up of the TB. It can just become a disseminated. So you're treating it. Then why do you want to differ? She, you said she's completely bed bound. She cannot even turn in bed bound herself. So why are you delaying treatment for unlike conditions? We have diagnosed TB or treatment. What's the problem? The duration of treatment, we're thinking of just a six-month treatment. As long as she's on appropriate therapy, there's no problem in giving her immunosuppression. Um... It's an article that is the increased risk of active tuberculosis disease in patients with dermatomyositis. Um, so the risk of having a condition like TB is very high, primarily because of two reasons. One is the disease in itself causes an immunosuppression. And secondly, a lot of patients who come to us with all these autoimmune conditions are already on um, steroid doses, which they've been started from outside. So this is this should be considered prior to starting appropriate therapy over here. The learning point is autoimmune condition predisposes patient to diseases like TB malignancy it's caused by either the disease in itself or the immunosuppressive therapy that we use. So these need to be evaluated and managed concurrently. this patient have any pain in the proximal muscle cells? It started off initially when the patient's symptoms started. There was dull aching pain that was there. But by the time and patient present. Brought out so that a, a clinical meeting presentation looks more like a clinical meeting presentation. Uh, a few comments. This was a very poorly done clinical meeting presentation. Uh, the clinical part of it was extremely poor. 
The examination was described extremely poorly. History was described extremely poorly. There was no neurological localization done here correctly. And a vague discussion on a couple points of management here and there, which nothing was clear or specific. Uh, an, an element of clarity has to be brought into these presentations and focus a lot more on the clinical localization of the problem and not some antibodies showing dermatomyositis. She had a on and off history of three months of cough that was there prior to the emotion. The tone is normal, and we have assumed that the weakness is element and its muscle. That's not how we have seen you know, the expert for patient or something. The diagnosis of dermatomyositis itself is not fully established from what you are concerned. Test anybody being positive does not mean dermatomyositis. They are not going to be tested. Thanks, sir. Dr. Krippa. Do we have a reference for this treatment modification that was done? Uh, not really. We just uh, we had a discussion. This was brought up in a discussion with uh, rheumatology and medicine one team, and then we came to this treatment. This. In your reading up, did you come, come across any 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 literature that says that patients who are having active infections when they require immunosuppression and for life threatening conditions, how do we approach it? There are not specifically for dermatomyositis, but otherwise they are actually recommending going ahead with the full dose of immunosuppression in case of life threatening conditions. In my patient with an acute tuberculosis, tuberculosis. on appropriate anti tumor therapy. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kripa. Next presentation is by Dr. Kripa Marin Abraham from Medicine 2, Double Hit.